Hey guys, in this video we'll go over designing your schematic as well as a brief overview of KiCad 4.0. Okay, so once you've downloaded KiCad, you're going to want to start a new project at the top left. Then click on this button to start creating your schematic. Now this is the default view that you'll see when you first open KiCad, but you can toggle the grid on and off as well as change the background color to black if you'd like. Today we're going to design a fourth order bandpass filter. To get started, click here to place a component and then click anywhere on the work area to pop up the component directory. You'll see a huge library of components that you can manually look through or you can search through by keyword. In this case, I just need a two pin connector. Once you start placing components, you can just click when you're ready to add another one. Now I'm going to need my capacitor, so I just start typing in capacitor and the search results pop up. Just double click on the component you want and then click again to place it in the schematic. Now this design is going to have two of the same capacitors, so I'm going to have to change the value of this one before I copy it. To change the value of a component, hover over it and press V. To copy a component, press C. To move a component, press M. And to rotate a component, press R. Once you've added the components, you can begin placing wires. To add a wire, click here and then just click where you want the wire to begin. Every click places an anchor point until you've reached an acceptable endpoint for the wire. Now that we have all our components in place, I'm going to add some test points to the board so we can see how each of the stages of the filter are working. Test points are not necessary, but they definitely make troubleshooting easier down the road. Now let's annotate all the components by clicking here. This will let you sort your components, and I like to sort them based on their X position. You'll see now that we have resistor 1, resistor 2, resistor 3, and so on. Now let's move on to assigning footprints. Just click here and the window will pop up with all the components listed. You can sort the results on the right by keyword and number of pins. To search through specific libraries on the left, just click on the one you want and then click on this to see all the footprints from that library. You can still sort by keyword and number of pins, but you'll only see footprints from the library you have selected on the left. Once you're done, just close the screen and click save and exit. Now we're ready to generate the net list. Just click here and then click on generate net list. A netlist is just a file that maps out all your connections of your schematic with lines of code instead of the graphics you see on the screen. What you might want to do before laying out the board is to simulate your circuit. There are a lot of professional circuit simulators like Proteus Simulation, a P-Spice, and LT-Spice, but I really like this browser-based simulation for most lower frequency circuits. Just go to falstad.com forward slash circuit. Here you'll see that I've recreated our circuit in the browser. I have a source sweeping through the audible frequency range and you can see the various frequency responses of each stage of the filter at the bottom. Stage 1 is a high pass filter and you can see it attenuating the low frequencies while passing the higher frequencies. Stage 2 is a low pass filter and when you combine it with a high pass filter you get a band pass filter that favors a specific frequency band. As I said before this is a fourth order band pass filter so this basically just means that there are four stages. You can see at the bottom that each filter stage you add increases the slope of the frequency response. You'll also notice that as each stage progresses, the voltage begins to drop more and more. For this reason, you might want to add an op amp at the end to amplify your signal like I have shown here. See you next time.